While I was working on a message about the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Great Tribulation, and the Mr. 666, something in Daniel chapter 11 caught my attention. In verse 37 it tells us, that the Antichrist will not regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. It seems to indicate that the Antichrist will have no regard for the desire of women, in meaning that the women will be very low on his list. And when I started to look and meditate on that, something caught my attention. Throughout the ages, women have been suppressed. They have been rotten down, and they have almost been placed as, uh, at the level with an animal in some cases. When you look at how different religions operate with their women, you have to get suspicious that Satan has a definite hatred for the weaker sex. So the question is, why does Satan hate the weaker sex? Is there any specific reason for that? And why do so many religions still suppress their women today? I want to teach on this subject today, but before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name, and I pray, O oh God, that you will open the hearts of them that are listening, that they will pay attention, O oh God, to the Scriptures. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your revelation. I ask you that you will bless, especially the women today, that they will see themselves in Scripture as one that has been raised up by the Lord Jesus Christ to an equal, equal status with man. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I ask you, Lord, to bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. When one studies the New Testament, it doesn't take us long to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is raising the woman to its original status that she had before the fall of Adam. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, it tells us, For you are all the children of God, by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. So he is raising the woman to the same level as the man, just like it was before the fall of Adam. Let's go into Genesis chapter 1, and I will read you how the female and the male were created. Genesis chapter 1 tells us in verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. So God is giving Adam and Eve a command to subdue the earth. He has absolutely no distinction between them. They are male and female. They were both equally created in God's eyes. When you study Genesis chapter 5, it tells us that in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now let us take a look in what order God created male and female. It tells us in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 2, 
And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we see here, there is an order in which the Lord God created the male and the female. But it does not tell us here that there was any difference in their status. They were both equal in the eyes of God. But something happened in the Garden of Eden that causes this confusion that we still have today. For you see, Satan came through the serpent and beguiled Eve. She lied to him. And she took from the tree, from the fruit of the tree, of knowledge of good and evil, and she ate of it. And then she gave that fruit also to Adam, and he ate of it. And then God pronounced a sentence on them before he expelled them from the garden. And I will read you what happened. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, I have, which I have commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground, for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So we can see that the, the sentence that the Lord God pronounced upon the serpent, the woman, and the man. But something happened between the serpent and the woman, and it is this. The Lord God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He didn't say, I will put enmity between thee and the man and the woman. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Why didn't he say Adam and Eve's seed? It is because he was going to bring forth Jesus Christ out of the woman, and man had nothing to do with it, for Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and she brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the enemy that Satan faced, and he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is why Satan hates the woman so much, because Satan knew that she would bring forth the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a very interesting story when you read it, how all this came to pass. And then he said in verse 16, that the husband shall rule over the wife. But 
This all came to a standstill. This all came to a conclusion. When the Lord Jesus Christ was born, he broke the curse that the man was to rule over the wife. Of course, there is an order in the family, just like there is order in the Trinity, but there is no such a thing as God saying that the man is over the woman in any respect. The woman has to respect the husband, and the husband has to respect the woman. There is no distinction between the two. God has created us equal, but when we look at how religions operate today, it seems that they take for granted that the woman was created lower than the man. She was put under man because of the curse, because of the sentence that the Lord God pronounced on the woman in Genesis chapter 3. But once Jesus was born, that curse was broken. So I want you to pay attention. Study these scriptures. I know for a fact that many religions still regard the woman as lower than the man. Even the religion I come from, the woman is not even allowed to have a driver's license. And I am sure there are more religions out there who call themselves by the Lord Jesus Christ, who regard the woman as lower than the man. Well, check that out because we are all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will have to give an account of our attitude that we had towards the weaker sex. And if we realize that Satan hates the woman so much, then we men should do all we can to protect and to love that weaker vessel which God has placed by our side. The Lord Jesus Christ, if you will study these scriptures, the Lord Jesus Christ will give you an understanding and open your eyes and bless you. And in the next segment of this message, I will show you how the New Testament raises the woman to her original status. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing. Amen. The religion that I grew up in made it very clear that a woman is at her best when she stays quiet and does not voice her opinion. And that is the idea I had when I became a Christian. I thought that the woman had absolutely no say-so. But when I started studying the Word of God, I realized that that wasn't the case with Christianity. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, it tells us, For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And that was an eye-opener eye to me. Why would then religions teach that the woman is below the man, if we have become all one in Christ Jesus? In Acts chapter 2, the Apostle Peter tells us very clear that it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens. I will pour out in these days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. This is, a, this is the word of God here. He said, I will pour out of my spirit upon my servants and upon my handmaidens. The argument may be that scripture teach that the women should stay silent in the churches. And the women, the wives, should be in subjections to the husband. Let's look at these scriptures. 
See if we understand them really in the way that God has written them. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. But in verse 21, it tells us that we are supposed to submit ourselves one to another in the fear of God. So that means the husband has to, to submit himself also to the wife. Never mind the wife only submitting to the husband. How about women staying silent in the churches? Now, this can cause a controversy here, but I want to show you some scriptures. In 2 Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, it tells us, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. For I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to us absurd authority over the men, but to be silent. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in transgression. So, uh, so the Apostle Paul is reaching back to where the woman was deceived. We have to remember though that that curse was broken by our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 15 it tells us, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sovereignty. A lot of religious women or religious circle believe that a woman who has many children will be saved. That is not the case. That contradicts scripture. What this verse means here, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. What this scripture means, she shall be saved from that curse when the Lord Jesus Christ is born from the woman. Study it and you'll see that this is what it means. Yes, God has a way of revealing things, the scriptures, to these who seek with an honest heart. Now let's look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. It tells us here, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But if they are commanded, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Here is getting right to the point. He's telling them that the woman should stay silent as the law commands. We know for a fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came and he fulfilled the law. Now all of a sudden that curse is broken and I will show you what this scripture means. He is asking them, you are asking me, should the women stay silent in the churches as the law commands? Should they learn what God is speaking to us from their husbands at home? Should they sit quietly and not say anything? In verse 36 he's asking him, What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? Very interesting. He is rebuking them for asking if the woman should stay silent in the churches. It gives you a total new meaning of what this scripture reads if you study it, through the Holy Spirit. Yes, I know many religious systems will not agree with what I have just shared, but that is beside the point. Now let us be careful. There is order in the family. The Lord Jesus Christ made the man the head over the house, the man and then the woman. They are supposed to be in subjection one to another. Somebody has to be the leader. It is like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know for a fact 
that they all three have different functions. But nowhere in scriptures do you read that one wants to be above the other. They all know their place in the Trinity. And this is exactly how it will be with a husband and wife, with a man and a woman who have the Holy Spirit within themselves. They will know the place where God has placed them. And they will walk in holiness and reverence one towards another. Yes, dear people, this is the message that the Lord has laid upon my heart. I just, I, I prayed that the Lord will give me the ability to bring it forth in a way so that people will be able to understand. For God is not a God of confusion, but He is also a God who loves to wish that His children live in harmony. Far too long have religious Christians dominated their woman just because they feel that this is what scriptures teach. Be honest with yourself. God does not want anybody to dominate anything. We are here to subdue the earth. This is, God, this is God's plan for the man and the woman. We are not here to subdue each other. The Lord will open your heart and open your eyes to this message and bless you. Amen.